Sir. Eat that meat, Jennifer. Why doesn't that pheasant look pleasant? Fasten your taste buds for gastronomic rhyme. Because us two fat ladies are itching up to get to do your kitchen. Yeah! Oh, yes. Marvellous to be in Jersey. Phew, imagine picking potatoes on these hills. The gay of pickers make people will be starved. They come from Madeira, you know. Madeira. Time to practice my rusty old Portuguese. Now we're looking for La Pre Manor and the Grand Seigneur. I do believe we've been going up and down this same bit of road. Follow the coast, they said. Can't build that much coast, can they? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Morning. Morning. Good dia. Good dia. Good dia. We're lost. Lost. We're looking for. Um, he has a. He has the Maitre. Mr. Maitre. Mr. Le Maitre. Le Maitre. Yeah. Yeah. The Prime Manor. The Prime Manor. Prime Manor. Oh, we finished the field and we're going now for the Prime Manor. Oh, good. I think these are the people we're going to cook for, Jennifer. We're going to cook for all of you. Follow the tractor. Yeah. Yes. Can you follow the tractor? Of course. We're going now. Vamos embora. Vamos Just when you speak Portuguese, dear, isn't it? Not much of it, near. More than me. You get a bit muddled. Evan knows where we're going. Very excited. very appropriate we should go and cook for the lord of the manor, for his workers, for his gang. I like a gang of workers to cook for. Yeah, that's good. Very gang. So there's a very lot, don't Yeah, great. Oh, Lovely. somebody on the door. Let's have a look. Ladies, I'm round the back in the bread oven with my cabbage. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. We better get to see what he's up to. Go round the back and see if we find the bread oven. <laughs> the cabbage, is it? I suppose this is the right place. Round the back, he said. And this no. must be round the back. Nice little. What's this? Oh, no. Hello. Now we found you, the Grand Seigneur. <laughs> That's it. Hello. Hello. What a lovely sight. Hello, Hello I'm Teresa. Teresa. I'm just what? doing a bit of um, cabbage loaves. You can help me if you like. Yes, yeah, surely. You have to what put them we on, do? Just put them on the paddle, right in the middle. Yeah. And then one leaf on top. Because I mustn't waste any time. I'll no, no, get them no, in no, as quickly as I can. Because it's your work as we're going to feed, isn't it? That's it. What I'm really looking for are the, uh, are the proper kitchens. Oh, to cook yes. For the Portuguese people. That's right. Mm. If you go out the door mm. and straight across the yard, it's right in front of you. You can't miss it. How long will these take? Oh, half an hour or so. Fantastic. I've never seen anything like it. I look forward to seeing it. <coughs> we better go find the kitchen, then we'll see them yes. later. Bye bye for now. Farewell. That way, huh? Yeah. Very curious, that idea of wrapping your bread in cabbage leaves before you cook it. It's <laughs> deeply sinister. Um, why do you think they do it? We, didn't, we haven't tasted it yet. Do you think it keeps the moisture in or something? Possibly it does. Or gives it some strange esoteric flavour. It may well, be wonderful. Oh, oh cabbage smell. <laughs> <laughs> it may be wonderful. I'm going to make a lovely luscious chocolate pie. Spelt P-Y-E. And this is a 18th century recipe from Hannah Glass. And it has the most unusual crust. It's made with simply ground almonds, egg white, and caster sugar. No butter, no flour. And I'm going to start by weighing out six ounces of ground almonds. And put it in my bowl. With two ounces of caster sugar. Now this is this unbleached caster sugar. It's actual caster sugar, but as you can see, it's the most beautiful pale golden colour and the white of one egg. 
and I'm going to mix it all together using my hands. Of course. Naturally. The thing is that you've got to really squish it together into a paste. There we are. I'm just going to chill this now. I'm going to bring back one that I've chilled in the tin. Now that's what I like. No nonsense. That's a chilled one. There you are, you see? Yeah. But not yet cooked. You can see my fingerprints in it very clearly. Good. Just going to pop it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And now... I'm just going to break up my chocolate. I've got some very good chocolate. 70% cocoa solids, that's the answer. The more cocoa solids you have, the better. It's a chocolate pie. Just keep breaking away. How much chocolate have you to break? No, oh, quite a lot, all the stuff i got here. Well, I better tell them what I'm up to then. I'm doing that good old thing, birth stroganoff, which there's, there's no real sort of ritual for it. It was invented in Russia, but I imagine probably by a Frenchman. I'll probably get hundreds of Russians screaming about that. But there is one essential which lots of people forget. It's got to be fillet of beef. What you do is have your fine piece of fillet like this and cut it into strips. I wonder who Count Stroganoff was. I don't know. And I've got a book that tells you such. I like to envisage Count Stroganoff, you know, dashing in his hessian boots. Twirling his mustachios and flashing his sabre. Oh, yes, all of that. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to put the um, onions on first. I've got a pan here with about two ounces of butter in it. To which I'll add a drop of olive oil. Now, onions. I wonder how the Indian onion shortage is going. Are we having an Indian onion shortage? The un Indians are having an onion shortage. There were riots last year. My dear, I think of all the bargees. Now, I have a great excitement to add to this. Apart from my ordinary field mushrooms and the little brown uh, topped ones, I've had these glorious things here on the island. Yellow oysters. What do they taste like, I wonder? Try a bit. It was a very good scent. Hmm. Reminiscent of something. But what is it? They've got a curious sort of aftertaste. So... Oh, well. We only had it, though. Damn. Anyway, we'll pop them in, see what happens. Might murder everybody. No, no. Pretty, pretty. Wait, I'm going to melt my chocolate. They're wonderful, these yellow oysters. I wonder if they'll keep their colour. Little sea salt. Some nice freshly ground black pepper. Good and rough. In the pestle and the mortar. Now then, I'm going to make my little mixture. I've invented it. One teaspoon of sugar, that's all you need. Two good teaspoons of powdered mustard. Mix it up. It's going to be unusual. Then... A slurp of port. I may add more port. I just may. Add more port. <laughs> yes, makes me think you just may. I remember lovely dishes in Portugal, cooked with port. I think better better for cooking than drinking, but that's because I don't like it much. Fine great pans, these. Isn't they wonderful? Better than going to the gym. Anything is better than <laughs> going to the gym. <laughs> In this pan, we'll do the meat by itself. And when you're cooking these, don't crowd the pan. Just have lots of space in between them. Otherwise, they're going to go stewy. A quick searing is what we want. Right, well, that's the last of the beef strips. We'll put our old friend back on the, on the stove. Now for some lovely Jersey cream. Soured. This is what they always put in the end. This makes a... Wonderful sauce with all the juices in it. What you should do, really, is finish it all off and serve immediately. But as we're needing to serve it later, I'll take it off and chop some parsley. There we are, that's done now. So I'll just bring this across. Keep it moving, otherwise it will set. 
And to this, I'm going to add some lovely Jersey cream. This is pouring cream. What you must make sure of is that the cream is at room temperature. Because if you put cold cream straight out of the fridge into this hot chocolate, the whole thing will seize up. <coughs> like that. Well, will? The whole thing, if you pour cold cream into hot chocolate, it just sets immediately. Use quite a lot of elbow grease. Keep moving it. Keep working it. That's a wonderful smell. Thank you. It did, didn't it? Mm. And what I do, then at the end, is just put a, a whisk through it, just to put some air into it. Now, this pie crust, as you can see, is one that's already cooked and I've allowed to cool. I'm just going to pour the chocolate into the case. Yum! Haha, <laughs> doesn't it look lovely? When this has cooled a bit, one can decorate it with some tasted almond flakes, sprinkle them over the top, and some yellow rose petals. Goodness! Mm. That's very far-fetched. He loves me. He loves me not. It's wonderful. You should have a great shower of them coming down, like one of those wonderful Alma Tadema pictures. <laughs> a, cloud, a cloud coming from the ceiling. He loves me not. <laughs> there we are. Doesn't that look lovely? Ravishing. Have you been reading your almanac lately? <laughs> it's not a thing I often do. Oh, well. There you are. Had you done so, you would know that it is the spring equinoctial tide. Well, in Jersey, they're probably witchy. Ah, mm. but even better. Uh, what I really want you to do is take me to the beach on the bike. Of course, yes, yeah, sure. To right. the beach. To the beach. <laughs> you better put some wet things on. <laughs> Jennifer, no parking on Slipway or Never mind, I've got permission. Aha, my almanac was right. Tides out, it's a new moon, and it's the time of the year we're allowed to hunt for almonds. Years of the sea, Jennifer. But they're like a jar of limpet, aren't they? Well, they're sort of sea snails, really. They have green horns. Denizen of the deep. Well, I'd rather you stop before we get that, Jennifer. I don't think it's amphibious. I am the gay caballero. Coming from Rio de Janeiro. You happy sitting on that rock, then? Yes, I'm here in the sea. I'm Millie, a messy old mermaid. I'm well on the rocks, and I know it. <laughs> I'm happier here than in puddles. Well, no spirit of adventure. Look, uh, every rock you turn over, there may be an armor underneath. I've got some little winkle things here. Well, that'll be useful. Some shrimps in here, too. It's the suspense. Oh, Ooh, look! You got one? Yes. Do they swim in or they were brought in? They were brought in with the seaweed, I suppose. Or do they live there forever? There we are. Oh, huh. bravo. Look at the size of that. Looks like a tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> they're Usually rare. They're worth a lot of money, dear. I know. Usually where you find one, you find others, you see. Yeah. They eat the seaweed, you know. Grazing? No, they actually eat it. Oh, they eat it? Yeah, they really do eat it. Like cows. It's good. It's not quite nice to eat. If you say so, yes. Well, the Japanese eat it. Hmm. Got it. Look. Another big one. Isn't that good? Well, <laughs> yes, they're quite big, the tides here. Yes, watch it. Don't go out too far, because they come out very quickly. Oh, well, maybe I'll... And you'll get... You'll get... Toad way! Yes! Another one! Ah. Great! Look, look, look! A beauty! Well, that should do us for a little snackette, I think. Yes, but I'm keen to try. We have to beat them hard. Yes, and I suppose I have to do that bit too. One way of getting rid of frustration and anger. They look like uh, sliced calamari or something. Right, well, I'll just. Clean another one, though. What is it? Uh, against every adversity of the yeah. British will barbecue, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they look rather tempting now. Yes. Have a go. Thank you. The dainty morsel. Oh, lovely, thank you very much. Mmm, mm. lovely. Yummy. Good taste. Mmm. It's a lovely flavour. 
bit snaily, wilky. Much more flavour than the yeah. snail. Good texture too. Oh, Jennifer, that tide's coming in a bit. Oh, I believe it'll rot us, won't it? Probably. Perhaps we better go. quite a lot of this. We'd like these things. Yes. Look, look, what a treasure. Oh, lovely. From churn of cream. Churn of cream. That's oh, sweet. I think wonderful. I'll put that between my knees. Now, I require carrots, onions, garlic, and tomatoes. Bag of mm. mushrooms. We're cleaning it out. Look, there's a box. Would you like a box? Oh, yes, that's a very good idea. Give me a box. Put everything in the box. Now, that'd be about, um, whatever, we'd recovery, wouldn't it? Drive-in shopping. Amazing. Extraordinary. Isn't that amazing? I mean, what an extraordinary island. It's extraordinary. I keep thinking I'm in Portugal. It's full of Portuguese. And obviously very honest. Very honest. This is amazing, this uh, idea. Picking up veg on the side of the road and putting money in. Anyway. I'm going to make a Portuguese fish stew. There you go, you see. More Portuguese. <laughs> Especially for our, our dear potato pickers. And here I've got some lovely fresh fish which were caught up this very morning by a hunky fisherman. Look at it, lovely. Red and mullet. Look at that red and mullet. Isn't that pretty? And I've got rock salmon and sole and turbot and, of course, sardines. You can have any sort of fish you want, but the sardines are mandatory. Right, I'm going over here to start my preparations. Now, here I have a, an earthenware dish. You put in it some olive oil and some onions that I've, I've just sliced. These are red onions, but they can be any old onions. Is that a Portuguese pot? It looks it's Brazilian. A Brazilian, sir. There we are. Now, I'm going to add some, some chopped garlic. And some parsley, quite a lot of parsley. I've got some lovely Jersey tomatoes. And I'm going to add to this some vinegar, just a dash of vinegar. Not malt. Oh, no, no, wine. Yeah. And then just a little bit of water to help the juices run. And now I've got some uh, bay leaves, put those in, crumble them in, and some nutmeg, fresh nutmeg, just grate it in. Oh, I love the smell of nutmeg, don't you? I love nutmeg in practically everything. Mm. I think it's delicious. And some chilli peppers. The hot ones? The hot ones, red ones. And some peppercorns, which I just bashed about a bit. And a few drops of, of piri piri sauce, that's Portuguese chilli sauce, just a few drops. Gosh, it's getting hotter and hotter. No, <laughs> it's not, but there's a lot of fish to take there up. Is, there is, there we are. And I'll just leave that stew, put the lid on, let it stew for a little bit. Jennifer, your stock looks wonderful. I think it's ready. Mmm. Shall I move it off the heat for you? Yes, do it. It's only about an hour and a half. I think that's plenty of time. Now I must come do things to my fish. There we are. Beautiful stock. Proper chicken stock. This is the... I I'm, I'm, seem to be in a Russian mood for some reason or other. Um, but this is a marvellous soup. It was made for Pierre Le Grand. Peter the Great, the great emperor of Russia. And it's really good chicken stock. All it contains is the chicken carcasses, water, a bit of salt, 
a good bouquet garni of parsley, thyme and bay leaf. No nonsense about stock cube. You never have any nonsense with a stock cube, do you? Oh, never have any nonsense with a stock cube. I'll just strain it. I love a really good chicken soup. Like the lovely Jewish chicken soup. Brilliant. Cure all for everything. Jewish penicillin. Yeah. Right. I think that's enough for my needs. Now, I've got my nice clear soup. Still got lots left. And if you strain that, it'll make a lovely jelly, which you can use for sauces and things. Now we'll do the thickening part. Now we've got this butter and flour mixture, which I shall add little by little. It's called a beurre And we'll add this to make the stock more creamy, waiting for real cream later. He was a marvellous man, Peter the Great, wasn't he? I mean, he came to England to study shipbuilding. But he took back a wonderful... Wasn't he a wonderful Scotsman? Yes. Took him back with him to build. He was great. He stayed there for years. That's and right. became very rich. That's right. The Scots built Leningrad. Built half of Moscow, too. The Scots are forced to be reckoned with. Hurrah! Now, what I want to do is mix two whole eggs. I'll season the eggs and then we'll adjust it later. I'm going to put in about half a pint of cream. Lovely. Look at that, isn't that wonderful? Lovely little, lovely little thing. Mm. And add it carefully to the soup, because we don't want it scrambled. Stirring the while, stir, stir. Now, to add to a further Russian touch, is put a good slug of vodka in. This makes, this makes it very Russian. Indeed. And if you want more later, you can. If you have Russian gets and they want more. But it sort of gives it an edge. It gives it a, a sort of kick. Now I'm just going to fry a few little vegetables as a garnish only. It's uh, just a stick of celery, a carrot and a handful of mushrooms. Really, for prettiness. Right. I'm nearly at the end, Clarissa. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I like dear, I'm here. <laughs> Good. Well, I'll just go and get my stew pot and start building my stew. A lovely idea, building a stew. Now, the thing to remember is to put your fish on in the layers of toughness, so that the ones that take the longest to cook are at the bottom. Scrumptious looking. Isn't it good? Yeah. So I'm going to start with the um, dogfish, or rock salmon, as it is so euphemistically called. And what you want to do is intersperse the layers with slices of, of, of green pepper. Just a few pieces. And make sure it is a layer, you know, sort of spread it around across the dish. And now I'm going to put in the turbot. More peppers. Just keep building it up as you go. And then, on the very top, and this is always on the very top, the sardines. And now we get to the dead clever bit. We've got these slices of nice, rustic bread. Butter it lavishly. And then we're going to put it on the very top of the, um, the stew, butter side down. And press it down firmly. Yeah. Wonderful dish, isn't it? Lovely. That'll see you right. Yeah. What we need now, dear, is a nice big pot of new potatoes. Get them straight from the ground. Yes, and we can go out the field and get them. Let's do it. Your that's coat, dear. Yes. That, that's happy. That's very happy. Yes. Your coat. Thank you. Would you like a broomstick? Yes, to get me there. <laughs> <laughs> To the fields. Right, well, if we walk up the, um, the hill there, we can catch up with those diggers and pick up 
the last of the potatoes and have a nice bowl of them with the dinner. They must be starving. The first from the ground. Think how delicious. Covered in butter or cream and herbs. Well, here you are. That's not too bad, Jennifer. Look how far we've come. It's yes, far too far. Watch this, Jennifer. Be careful. <laughs> Ooh. 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 They're holding it. <laughs> from, to press from them down. the top. <laughs> OK. Well done. <laughs> then you've got to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting a really steep bit now. I'll leave it to you experts. <laughs> OK. Uh, how about that, then, Jennifer? Bravo, dear. Fearless oh, Freddy. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how are you doing? You haven't gathered many yourself. It's no occupation for a gentleman. <laughs> but it's suitable employment. It is the duty of the gentleman to give employment to the artisan, <laughs> my feeling. <laughs> right, OK. I think they're great artisans doing all that. I think they're brilliant. It all looks very nice for them. Give it, give it the last little touch. Keep them warm after all their endeavours. Very good. Let's put another slug in, I think. <laughs> I'll, I'll measure it this time. That should be enough, I think. Did um, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, it's lovely. Isn't that splendid? Mm. It looks great. It's it stayed so but sort of perfect. <laughs> Creme Pierre Le Grand, a grand soup for a grand emperor. <laughs> Denizens from the deep, spiced up in this lovely fish stew for Portuguese workers with an appetite. But Stroganoff, a drop of port will transform this fine dish. <laughs> Seductively sublime, who can resist the aphrodisiac of chocolate pie? Well, we won't forget Jersey in a hurry. I love all those Portuguese. They're having a lovely, jolly time. I they sweet, they were. It's so good you could talk to them. A little bit. Well, I think they were very touched. <laughs> I think they liked it. And the Ormots, wasn't that exciting? That was amazing. I have something for you. There you are. They were the shells. They're yes. so beautiful. We can have them for ashtrays. Look at the pretty, wonderful colours inside. Oh, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Mother of pearl. And I didn't realise they were an, a, the Abalone family. I've eaten Aborigine. Aborigine. I hope you haven't. <laughs> Abalones. <laughs> Abalones. <laughs> and as for me, ploughing up a hill... It was a wonderful feat. Mm. I should be able to go home and bore many unfortunate guests for months to come at dinner parties. Yes, sometimes, apparently, those fields of potatoes wash into the bay. That must be very boring for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very probably. Bang, bang. Duck. I think you missed. Mm. <laughs> well, cheers, Duck. Your very good health and a jersey. To jersey. Charming jersey. That was amazing. I have something for you. There you are. They were the shells. They're yes. so beautiful. We can have them for ashtrays. Look at the pretty, wonderful colours inside. Oh, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Mother of pearl. And I didn't realise they were an, an, the Abalone family. I've eaten Aborigine. Aborigine. I hope you haven't. <laughs> Abalones. <laughs> Abalones. <laughs> and as for me, ploughing up a hill... It was a wonderful feat. Mm. I should be able to go home and bore many unfortunate guests for months to come at dinner parties. 
Yes, sometimes apparently those fields of potatoes wash into the bay. That must be very boring for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very probably. Bang, bang. Duck. I think you missed. Mm. <laughs> well, cheers, Duck. Your very good health and a jersey. A jersey. Charming jersey. Curious that idea of wrapping your bread in cabbage leaves before you cook it. It's deeply sinister. Um, why do you think they do it? We didn't. We haven't tasted it yet. Do you think it keeps the moisture in or something? Possibly it does. Or gives it some strange esoteric flavour. Maybe well, wonderful. Oh, oh, cabbage! <laughs> <laughs> it may be wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to make a lovely, luscious chocolate pie. Spelt P Y E. And this is a 18th century recipe from Hannah Glass. And it has the most unusual crust. It's made with simply ground almonds, egg white, and caster sugar. No butter, no flour. And I'm going to start by weighing out six ounces of ground almonds. And put it in my bowl with two ounces of caster sugar. Now this is this unbleached caster sugar, it's actual caster sugar, but as you can see it's the most beautiful pale golden colour. And the white of one egg. And I'm going to mix it all together using my hands. Of course. Naturally. The thing is that you've got to really squish it together into a paste. There we are. I'm just going to chill this now. I'm going to bring them and pick up the last of the potatoes and have a nice bowl of them with the dinner. They must be starving. The first from the ground. Think how delicious. Covered in butter or cream and herbs. Well, here you are. That's not too bad, Jennifer. Look how far we've come. Yes, far too far. Watch this, Jennifer. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. They're holding it. <laughs> to press from the top. <laughs> there it goes. Well done. Then you've got to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting a really steep bit now. I'll leave it to you experts. <laughs> OK. Uh, how about that then, Jennifer? Bravo, dear. Cheerless Freddy. Ah, <laughs> uh, the lamb. Well, how are you doing? You haven't gathered many yourself. <laughs> it's no occupation for a gentleman. Uh. <laughs> but it's suitable employment. It is. The duty of the gentleman to give employment to the artisan, <laughs> my feeling. <laughs> right, OK. I think they're great artisans doing all that. I think they're brilliant. Well, I think that all looks very nice for them. Give it, give it the last little touch. Keep them warm after all their endeavours. Very good. Let's put another slug in, I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll measure it this time. That should be enough, I think. Grab that crab, Clarissa. Eat that meat, Jennifer. Why doesn't that feather look pleasant? Fasten your taste buds for gastronomic rice. Because us two fat ladies are itching up. Get to New York City. Yeah! Oh, yes. Marvellous to be in Jersey. Phew, imagine picking potatoes on these hills. The gay of pickers make people will be starved. They come from Madeira, you know. Madeira? Time to practice my rusty old Portuguese. Now we're looking for La Pre Manor and the Grand Seigneur. I do believe we've been going up and down this same bit of road. Follow the coast, they said. 
going to be with that much too, isn't it? Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Bonnie, good, good to see you. Good to see you. We're lost. Lost. We're looking uh, for... Um, he has a... He has the Signor Maitre. Mr. Maitre? Le Maitre. Le Maitre. Yeah. The Prime Manor. The Prime Manor. Prime Manor. Oh, we finished the field tonight. I think it's delicious. And some chili peppers. The hot ones. The hot ones. Red ones. And some peppercorns, which I just bashed about a bit. And a few drops of, of piri piri sauce. That's Portuguese chili sauce. Just a few drops. Gosh, it's getting hotter and hotter. No, it's <laughs> not, Denver. There's a lot of fish to take up. Is this? There we are. And I'll just leave that stew, put the lid on, and let it stew for a little bit. Jennifer, your stock looks wonderful. I think it's ready. Mmm. Shall I move it off the heat for you? Yes, do it. It's under about an hour and a half. I think that's plenty of time. And I must come do things to my fish. There we are, beautiful stock. Proper chicken stock. This is the, I'm, I'm seem to be in a Russian mood for some reason or other. Um, but this is a marvelous soup. It was made for Pierre le Grand, Peter the Great, the great emperor of Russia. And it's really good chicken stock. All it contains is the chicken carcasses, water, a bit of salt, a good bouquet garni of parsley thyme and bay leaf. No nonsense about stock cube. You never have any nonsense with a stock cube, do you? Oh, never have. Calamari or something. Right, well, I'll just clean another one now. What is it? Uh, against every adversity of the yeah. British will barbecue, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they look rather tempting now. Yes. Have a go. Thank you. It's a dainty morsel. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Mmm. Lovely, mm. yummy. It is. Mmm. It's a lovely flavour. Yeah. A bit snaily, wilky. Much more flavour than the yeah. snail. Good texture, too. Oh, Jennifer, that tide's coming in a bit. Oh. I believe it'll rush us, won't it? Probably. Perhaps we better go. Sinking. Look at that. No, that's what we want. Stop, stop. Uh, Turn uh, around. Uh, yeah. Go back, go back. On the wrong side of the road, Jennifer. What will we do? Go up to it. Have a look. It's alright. Clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Drive through shopping, that's what we want. Look, look, how wonderful. Isn't that sweet? That's a wonderful smell. Thank you, it is. Isn't it? Mm. And what I do then at the end is just put a, a whisk through it, just to put some air into it. Now, this pie crust, as you can see, is one that's already cooked and I've allowed to cool. I'm just going to pour the chocolate into the case. Yum! Haha, <laughs> doesn't it look lovely? When this has cooled a bit, one can decorate it with some tasty almond flakes, sprinkle them over the top, and some yellow rose petals. Goodness! Mm. That's very far-fetched. He loves me. He loves me not. It's wonderful. You should have a great shower of them coming down, like one of those wonderful Al Matadema pictures. <laughs> a, cloud, a cloud coming from the ceiling. Loves me not. <laughs> there we are. Doesn't that look lovely? Ravishing. Have you been reading your almanac lately? It's <laughs> not a thing I often do. Oh, well, there you are. Had you done so, you would know that it is the spring equinoctial tide. Well, in Jersey, they're probably witchy. Ah, mm. but even better. Uh, what I really want you to do is take me to the beach on the bike. Of course, yes, yeah, sure. To the right. beach. To the beach. <laughs> you better put some wet things on. Building a stew. 
Now, the thing to remember is to put your fish on in the layers of toughness, so that the ones that take the longest to cook are at the bottom. Scrumptious looking. Isn't it good? Yeah. So I'm going to start with the um, dogfish, or rock salmon, as it is so euphemistically called. And what you want to do is intersperse the layers with slices of, of, of green pepper. Just a few pieces. And make sure it is a layer, you know, sort of spread it around across the dish. Now I'm going to put in the turbot. More peppers. Just keep building it up as you go. And then on the very top, and this is always on the very top, the sardines. And now we get to the dead clever bit. We've got these slices of nice rustic bread. Butter it lavishly. And then we're going to put it on the very top of the, um, the stew, butter side down. And press it down firmly. Yeah. Wonderful dish, isn't it? Lovely. That'll seem right. Yeah. What we need now, dear, is a nice big pot of new potatoes. Get them straight from.